Hi, Annie. Oh, good evening, Mr. Reed. Daily Express, please. The Daily Express? Oh, Britt, darling, don't tell me you read that scandal sheet. Hey, yes, sir. Thanks, Annie. We have to see what our competition's up to. Competition? Oh, surely the Sentinel doesn't worry about that horrid rag. I hate to admit it, but we do. Good night, Annie. Good night, Mr. What's the matter? Look. The Green Hornet. <laughs> Another challenge for the Green Hornet, his aide Cato, and their rolling arsenal, the Black Beauty. On police records, a wanted criminal, the Green Hornet is really Britt Reed, owner-publisher of the Daily Sentinel. His dual identity known only to his secretary and to the district attorney. And now, to protect the rights and lives of decent citizens, rides the Green Hornet. wasn't something like it or sort of like it. It was Black Beauty. An exact duplicate from the rockets to the magnesium wheels. It's incredible, Britt. How? How could anybody copy your car so exactly? It's not the how that bothers me, Frank. It's the who and the why. Who is this phony Green Hornet? Where'd he suddenly come from? Why the apparently senseless attack on the Sentinel truck? Mr. Reed's residence. Just a moment. Mike Exford. He's at a newspaper. Yes, Mike? I thought you'd want to call in the crew to get out an extra. We don't put out extras anymore, remember? We let radio and television. Radio, television, what do they know about? Freddy's here. Who's there? What are you talking about? The Green Hornet. This is awful. Thanks for coming down. Get on the phone and get somebody down here to clean up this mess. Yes, of course. You all right, Mike? A devil. A monster. He's gone too far this time. Hello? What? What's the matter? It's that man. The Green Hornet. He's just hit two more of our trucks. Anybody hurt? No. War. That's what it is. War. We've made this town too hot for him. So now he's out to get us. Well, he's bitten off more than he can shoot this time. Let's go to work. Where's my...
This is a nightmare. Mike's right about one thing. Somebody has declared war on the Sentinel. But why is he posing as the Green Hornet? Hi, Frank. Come on in. Britt, I, I... I can't understand this. Welcome to the club. I'll arrange for police protection for all your trucks tomorrow night. No. Why not? The police have their hands full already. They can't guard every truck. Besides, I want to make sure the real Green Hornet has some elbow room. Britt. When the Sentinel trucks roll tomorrow night, there'll be two Green Hornets out on the town. Mr. Reed's office. Yes, just a minute, please. It's Dan Scully. Dan Scully? Yes, he said he heard about the attacks by the Green Hornet and has some information you might be interested in. Uh, who's Dan Scully? He used to work here. He's a reporter now for the Daily Express. Yes, Dan? Sure, I want to talk to you. The Pony Room, in an hour. I'll be there. <laughs> So you're not happy at the Express? Well, maybe I just don't like having a woman as a managing editor. Especially a woman like Sabrina Bradley. I've never seen a harder, tougher, more ruthless dame in my life. I know. Sabrina and I are, well, not exactly friends, acquaintances. What Sabrina wants, Sabrina usually gets. And if there's anyone in her way. What are you trying to tell me, Dan? You're in her way, Mr. Reed. I am? Well, you and the Sentinel. You see, Sabrina's out to make the Daily Express the number one newspaper in this town. She doesn't care how she does it. She said as much. Now, I can't prove anything. Prove what? And she hired the Green Hornet, trying to wreck the Sentinel. Put you out of business long enough for the Daily Express to move in and grab a big chunk of your circulation. Now, wait a minute, Dan. Well, you know, Sabrina. You think about it. Well, what about Simon Neal? Simple Simon. Simple Simon? Now, that's what we call him around the Express. But he's still the publisher and the owner. Just a name painted on his office door. He's never there. He's too busy living it up. Now, the Express is Sabrina's baby. She runs the show. And like I said, I can't prove that Sabrina's behind this trouble you're having. But I thought I'd better tell you what I suspect. Good morning, Mr. Garth. I'm informed I've been accorded the singular distinction of being granted an audience by Her Majesty. Miss Bradley's waiting for you, if that's what you mean. How clever of you to guess. Hello, Sabrina. You look absolutely lovely this morning. Sit down, Felix. Mr. Neal is giving a party at his home tomorrow night. Not I... another one. Uh, Felix, if your work bores you, perhaps I should start looking for a new society columnist? <laughs> Sabrina, dear, you couldn't get along without me. And you know it. Don't be too sure. Now, do you want to cover the party or don't you? But of course. Simon Suarez are always great fun. All right. Here's the guest list. Oh, thank you. One more thing. Mr. Neal may have an announcement to make tomorrow night. Be prepared for it. I already am. And may I be the first one to congratulate you? I hope you and Simon will be very happy. How did you know that? <laughs> Sabrina, you know what an inveterate snoop I am. Miss Bradley's office? I asked for Simon Neal's office. 
All Mr. Neal's calls are transferred to Miss Bradley when Mr. Neal isn't in. Mr. Neal isn't in. All his calls are being referred to Sabrina Bradley. I'll talk to her. Miss Bradley, please. Mr. Reed of the Daily Sentinel calling. I'll see if Miss Bradley is in. Yes? No. No, I don't want to talk to him. Something wrong? Get out, Felix. If there is anything I can do. Get out. Customizing company. We've got it cornered. Let's move in. All right, Kato, let's go. A gunshot. Blast that door. Joe Kellogg. He made the other car. But he's never going to tell us whom he made it for. Let's let the police take it from here. Ah! Mike, will you calm down? devil's out to destroy everything your father lived and died for, and you tell me to calm down. That's right. This just came by special messenger. Thanks, Miss Case. This is strange. What is it? It's an invitation to attend a party at Simon Neal's home this evening. 
It isn't signed. No name on the envelope either. Are you going to go? Yes, I think I shall. After what Dan Scully told you about Sabrina Bradley. Even if what Dan says is true, I don't see Simon Neal being part of a plot to wreck the Sentinel. That's why I want to talk to him. Sound him out about Dan's suspicions of Sabrina. Maybe I'll get that chance at the party. You're making a mistake, Britt. I can feel it. A bad mistake. Actually, it'll be a very simple party. Uncle Simon prefers to entertain that way. And... Don't know what more I can tell you, Mr. Garth. You've done beautifully, my dear. By the way, uh... There is one more question about the party this evening. What time do you think your uncle will be making the announcement? Announcement? Yes, that he and Sabrina Bradley are going to be married. But he isn't. I mean, they aren't. Not being married? No. But Sabrina told me that. I don't care what she said. Uncle Simon told me that... I'd better not talk about it. It's strictly between Uncle Simon and Miss Bradley. Excuse me, Miss Melissa, but there's a telephone call for you. Thank you, Willoughby. Excuse me. I understand. Sabrina? Brit. Melissa, I don't think I've seen you since the press club's masquerade ball last year. Yes, it has been a long time. If you'll excuse me, I'd better check the buffet. Lovely girl. Yes. It's hard for me to remember she's not really Simon's daughter. Well, since she's his only relative, they're naturally very close. And Simon is such a uh, sentimentalist. <laughs> I know. You're looking well, Sabrina. So are you, Britt, in spite of the trouble you've been having. But then I suppose what happens to the Sentinel doesn't really matter to you, does it? I mean, after all, you did inherit the paper from your father. You didn't have to work to get where you are. You know, I've often thought it would be a source of great satisfaction to someone to know that they've come up the hard way. It is. You'll have to tell me about it sometime. Excuse me. I better say hello to Simon. Brett! Brett Reed! Hello, Simon. Brett, meet the girls. Hi, girls. Girls, meet Brett Reed. Simon, I'd like to talk to you. Oh, all right. Uh, don't forget where we left off, girls. <laughs> Well, what do you want to talk about? This person. Simon Darling. Yeah. You asked me to remind you when it was 10 o'clock. I did? The mayor, remember? Oh, yes, yes. That's the time he said he'd be here, wasn't it? I thought I'd be out front and give his honor a big hello when he drove up. Come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Tell me, Britt, what's on your mind? It's about Sabrina. Sabrina? Fine girl. Good newspaper woman. Think a lot of Sabrina. I hear the two of you are planning on getting married soon. Well, now, you don't want to believe everything you hear, and yet, uh, on the other hand, why shouldn't you? We'd better get back to the party. Look! It's the Great Hornet! Ah! Hello, Mr. Reed. You and the Sentinel have wanted to have a showdown for a long time now. And now you're going to have it. Goodbye, Mr. Reed. You haven't any sleep. <sighs> so do you. I haven't. I've been trying to figure this out. No? What's to figure? Whoever this imposter is, he's out to get you. The fact that he killed the wrong man last night isn't going to keep him from making another attempt on your life. I suppose not. If he got the wrong man. Oh, if. What are you talking about? He said you were the one he was after. Everybody heard him. I know, and that's what bothers me. Why did he make such a point in announcing that I was the one he intended to kill? Why didn't you shoot and get it over with? And how did he miss me? He was right in front of me at point-blank range. Yeah, that is strange. I think this phony Green Hornet got the man that he intended to kill, Simon Neal. Well, what about all the attacks on the Sentinel? It was just a smokescreen, Frank, a cover-up to make everybody believe exactly what they do believe. That Simon Neal's death was just a tragic accident. And they could so open and shut the police wouldn't even bother to investigate. Exactly. The perfect murder, if it worked. Yeah, but who, Britt? Who? I told you that Dan Scully suspects that Sabrina Bradley was the one behind oh, the attack. Oh, I can't move on anything as flimsy as that. That's right, you can't. But the Green Hornet, the real Green Hornet, can. And he's going to. 